Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. We're almost right ahead with 2021. Hoping to have a better year than this one. Praying for a miracle that this whole thing will be over. And I know it will. So anyway, I'm going to review a movie this week that I saw for the very first time on Disney+. Plus. Yes, I actually now have Disney+. Plus as a Christmas gift after pretty much a year and a half of denying it and and just being distressed about it and I wasn't so sure if I was going to sign up for it but lo and behold I did um well apparently yeah we're, we're getting it for the family too but so far I was actually watching some movies and shows on there just to see what it's like and you know what it wasn't that bad at all I mean they they had a lot of Disney shows and movies, not not all, but although not other films are on there though, like The Sandlot, Wookiee of the Year, even Enchanted's not on there, and I wish Home Improvement was on there as well. Uh, but they did have some Disney afternoon shows like Ducktales, Chippendales Rescue Rangers, Tailspin, Darkwing Duck, Gargoyles, Bonkers. You name it. I mean, there's like so many of them. And there's some Disney shorts there. And they even have um, the entire uh, series of The Simpsons. Uh, even with the movies and all. So yeah, I was watching them. <laughs> and everybody would. But I was lucky enough to watch this movie. And I'm glad to hear that they're not using a premium access where people had to spend $35 to watch it just like what they did with the live-action Mulan yeah I mean luckily for me I got to see it online before I finally got it on blu-ray that's exactly what I had to deal with to, to see the movie of course I can now see the movie on Disney Plus as well for free because they finally took out the premium access you know they knew this was a mistake See, maybe if they were smart enough, they will try to hard enough to actually release it for free before people even get a chance to see it in feeders. But maybe they should have done exactly what HBO Max is doing you know, with uh, Wonder Woman 84. You know, release the movie on a streaming service for those who want to see it on there. We're lucky enough to sign up for it, or just watch it in a in a local movie feeder that they'd be lucky enough to play it on. Just be aware of the pandemic. Just wear a mask, be six feet apart from everyone, and you'll be fine. Simple as that. Hell, you probably just watch it uh, at a drive-in if you have to. Or having to set it up as a drive-in. Whatever. Okay, I know. So let's get right to it. It's called So. The latest film from Disney and Pixar. Now, So was supposed to come out on June 2020, but of course, due to that, they had to be postponed, or they're trying to have a, a difficult way to release it this way. So they had to release it on Christmas of to be available. On. Of course, it had been premiered on the London Film Festival on October 11, 2020. Um, they even... the premiered it at the Cannes Film Festival, so they were lucky to do so. And already, you know, they're they're earning some awards, so I'm glad to hear that finally this movie is getting some attention here. It's getting positive reviews. I'm happy for that. Anyway, this was considered to be the first Pixar film where they focus on an African American protagonist. It's a story about a middle school music teacher named Joe Gardner who reunites his soul and his body after he accidentally got separated and you know, before he was going for his big break as a jazz musician. Yeah, so this is the story that's well told for our point of view here. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it stars uh, Jamie Foxx, Tina Fey, Graham Norton, Rachel House, Alice Braga, with Richard Alliel, 
Alicia Rash had, you know, was from the TV show, The Cosby Show. Uh, Donnell Rawlings, Quest Love, and Angela Bassett um, joined in with West Studi, Fortune Feinster, and um, John Ratzenberg. It's written by Peter Doctor, who also directed the film, along with Mike Jones and Kemp Powers. The movie begins in New York City. We meet a African-American middle school music teacher named Joe Gardner, who's voiced by Jamie Foxx, feels stuck in life and unfulfill his job. He dreams of becoming a successful jazz musician at his career, to which his seamstress mother, Libba, voiced by Felicia Rashad, objects, fearing that he won't be financially secured. So by his chance, he meets his former student, Curly, voiced by Chris Love, to form an opening in the band of a jazz legend, Dorothea Williams, who uh, was voiced by Angela Bassett. He was impressed by Dorothea with his piano playing and was offered the job on the spot. He was so happy that he heads up to prepare for his first performance later that night until he fell down accidentally into a manhole and found himself as a soul heading into the great beyond. Unwilling to die before his big break, Joe tries to escape but ends up in the great before, where soul counselors all named Jerry have prepared all these unborn souls for life on earth. So he poses as an instructor who sets to train these souls and winds up assigning a cynical soul named 22, voiced by Tina Fey, basically just just doesn't care about life as we know it. She's dislike being an Earth. You know, she, she's basically all she cares about is herself. You know, especially when she meets all these other folks around, and you know, for different time periods. But anyway, she she remains at the Great Before for millennia. And she reveals that she has a badge that fills up all the traits. She needs to find a spark to complete it and say she will be able to give it to Joe so she so he can return home where he belongs. Joe tries to assist 22 in finding a passion but attempts to prove futile with no other options around. 22 takes him out of the zone which is an area filled with people entering where their passion sets them into a verphoric trance. Houses the lost souls who became very obsessed of it. They meet Moonwind, who is voiced by Graham Norton, a sign troller who enters the zone to rescue all these lost souls. He agrees to help Joe return his body, but learns that Joe fell down through the man all the way down to the manhole that sent him into a coma. He was joined in with a therapy cat. So then the family had arrived to see how he's doing. Joe exactly so Joe excitedly hops back to Earth but accidentally brings twenty two with him, resulting twenty two to enter his body, and Joe ends up in his body of a therapy cat. So meanwhile, Terry, the accountant designed to counting souls, headed all the way through the great beyond to find counting off to convince Jerry to let her return the missing soul. So, during this uh, entire journey though, 22 inside uh, Joe's body is going around experiencing something that he's having trouble experiencing. Like, like having some pizza, you know, collecting all this other stuff that's um, around here and there, riding on the subway, um, trying to communicate with everyone, now, even this um, the student of his, including the student named Connie, who wants to play, who's having trouble, you know, playing the her passionate uh, trombone solo and all. So anyway, Moonwin had tries to track them down to to find uh, Joe and the and twenty two to see if if they can fix everything back together, or have them separate apart. 
before they might find a way to fix this. But then it can all lead to bigger trouble when the 22 suddenly uh, leaves and we'll soon begin to find out what happens to her if now if Joe had to go back to the way he was you know already normal hoping to get his dreams up he has to set right through to actually go back and be able to find 22 hoping things will be better for her see if she'll be able to find exactly what she could have done in the first place but hopefully she'll be able to but hopefully Joe will help her you know try to get to earth and then he'll be and then Joe himself will probably find his own second chance of life if he can just want to keep it that way uh, not to give away too much because I know it's hard <laughs> when, when you review films like this um, I, I would definitely say this was a, a wonderful treat from Pixar. Pixar's animation has always been visually stunning and wonderful and they're trying to do the best to capture everything that's not stereotypical in a way. But I know it's hard. Hard work. And does have some hilarious scenes here and there that really fits it, the tone of the story. Some excellent voice acting, no doubt about it. It, it always has excellent voice acting from, from the entire cast. I mean, Jamie Foxx definitely portrayed the role of Joe exactly what I expected. Because he's a very talented actor. I mean, he's been known for playing a lot of great roles in his career. Sometimes he plays a lot of different roles, too. <laughs> but hey, he was a former comedian for for the TV show In Living Color before he ends up doing a lot of great stuff and he's a singer himself too so he, I mean he's a great actor uh, Tina Fey comedian a former uh, Saturday Night Live uh, cast member often teams up with Amy Poehler I mean she's terrific no doubt plays a a very uh, she plays the kind of soul who's Kind of a bit of a dimwit at times, even though she is cynical. Like, she's being trapped in the great before, but I guess she's one of those characters who wasn't so sure what Earth is like anymore. So this is exactly what she had to feel. I guess the idea here was that, well, it's having to find a purpose in life. You know, what's your dream? What's your goal? in order for you to stay alive you know, so you don't end up being stuck forever follow your dreams no matter what um, try to uh, confront your mother and everything that you can accomplish and hoping you can take good care of things in life it's kind of like um, the journey through heaven and hell in a whole different way that's actually well told. I mean, the story is exactly right. I mean, they, they took the risk to do so. I mean, going for a different point of view. Especially going for diversity and all. I mean, they, they had to do what they can to, to risk it. And this is how it's told. I mean, that's how Pixar really is. I mean, they, they tell a lot of great stories. Trying to focus on something more special. And not just focusing on sequels, though, but focusing on on what they're going for for their journeys, and you know, and the characters, you know, doing exactly what they dream of, or the fact that we get to know them that we never seen before, and you know, helping to get along with <laughs> in sort of way, and. That's exactly what I had in mind when I saw this, and I'm glad I did. I happened to see this on Disney Plus for the first time. I mean, it was, the quality was actually surprisingly uh, stunning, too. I happened to watch this on <laughs> my Sony Bravia TV that I had since 2010. Um, 
it almost captures a bit of a like a Blu-ray quality type. I mean, I was expecting to see some pixelations here and some macro blocking, but you know, a movie like this that's supposed to come out in theaters. I mean, this was exactly what I really had in mind to see. So this, I mean, this is the. Um, this is personally, uh, it really has that nice experience. And anyway, I mean, it definitely had a heart and the music in its right place, the way I saw it. And I, I would definitely say this movie would be even much worth it if you saw it in theaters, too. And I, I hope that maybe if Disney finally gets a chance, I mean, maybe, since I know they're probably releasing it overseas in theaters, many places that don't have the streaming service, that I think maybe maybe Disney might be able to have a chance to release in selective theaters across the nation that are carrying it though. I mean, I, I know we're trying our best to battle against this pandemic and already that we're now getting the vaccine I mean, we're hoping for, we're praying for a miracle so everything will go back to the way they are back to normal, back to what we usually are doing in our lives and, not, and fearing not to have yet another bad year. Because we don't want that. <laughs> and I really hope it starts making more money too. Now I also get to back to the music though. Uh, interesting enough, they got uh, the two uh, stars from Nine Inch Nails, uh, Tred Rasner and Atticus Ross. They team up to compose uh, the music. They join in with John uh, Bastis. To provide all the the jazz music for Phil, so I'm so surprised that who would have thought? Since Nine Inch Nails has been known for giving us a lot of hard, edgier songs, what actually ends up teaming up to do to provide the to compose uh, a Pixar film? I mean, isn't that funny? Never thought, <laughs> but that's cool. But I, I know they have composed some movies too. And I'm just happy that they did. And Peter Doctor, who wrote and directed this, uh, did an excellent job. I mean, it really shows what he can do. I'm joining in with, all, with Mike Jones and Kent Powers. I mean, it's, it's an excellent script right there. And I love the music too. And I love the story. And it really fits the tone exactly right. The perfect movie for Pixar this year, joining in with Onward. Anyway, so that's, um, so check it out. Uh, if you have Disney Plus, um, feel free to watch this. I mean, you'll, you'll never go wrong here. Also, um, if you don't have Disney Plus, I mean, try to track it down online and see if you can watch it for yourself. I mean, I just hope Disney will release this selectively, so that way people won't have a hard time not be able to see it, and because that's how hard it is to do so. Okay. So anyway, that's the the movie Soul from Disney and Pixar, and I give the film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.